Um, this is the video for chapter 10. Um, so we're talking now about children's psychosocial development or socio-emotional development um, in middle childhood. Again, um, still continuing with the theme of uh, uh, elementary school age children up to the beginning of adolescence. So the next set of chapters will be dealing with adolescence. Um, at this stage or at this point in their life, um, children are developing um, a self-concept. Um, they're going to school, they're um, seeing what their peers can do, they're seeing what they can do. Um, so they have an idea of what their capabilities are and they're starting, that's becoming, um, they're having a schema, they're uh, in, elaborating on their schema um, and have, they have an internal working model of what it is that they can do. Um, they also have self-esteem, sort of their uh, value judgment of, of who they are and what they are. So self-concept being more um, factually based and self-esteem, how do I feel about that? Um, Susan Harder um, has done a lot of research on that. There are um, scales that she has used to assess self-esteem um, in children from uh, middle, middle childhood um, all the way up through college students and adults. Um, and what she's found is, and she and her colleagues have found, is that if you break self-esteem down into different categories, um, academic self-esteem, um, athletic self-esteem, um, behavioral self-esteem, um, you know, a, a number of different uh, domains, that you can then start to see how these things converge and how they build. Um, and if there's a problem with self-esteem, you have a better idea of how to work on those things. So um, she's done a lot of work. I think it's really interesting. Um, I think I um, said in um, some of the online materials, um, her scales are built so that you have two converging or um, conflicting statements. Um, some kids are um, really good at doing their homework and other kids aren't very good at it. Which one of those is more like you? And you ask the child to pick that's not an actual question, but it's, it's a similar format. Um, you say, which one of those is more like you? And they say, oh, the one that's not good at their homework. And then you ask them, is that sort of true for you or really true for you? And so you go through each line and college, the college student scale is, is set up very much the same way. Um, there are two statements. You pick the one that's more like you. And then you say, is it really true for you or, or very true or excuse, sort of true for you or really true for you? Um, and then you get uh, a rating um, based on that. They're also, especially with college students, um, sometimes some of these things aren't important. So I might not think of myself as a good athlete. How important is that to me? So there are also um, scales that measure the relative importance of some of these different things. It's like, you know, if, if athleticism is not my thing and I have a low uh, level of self-esteem for athletic self-esteem and it doesn't matter to me, no harm, no foul, right? Um, but if it matters to me, well, then that's a little bit different. Um, so um, keep that in mind when you're reading about self-esteem and self-concept, um, just how we measure it and um, how those things may change across the, um, across the middle childhood range. Um, Erickson's stage now is industry versus inferiority. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in that sense, um, children are learning to take the initiative, <clears throat> do their own kind of thing. Um, and then you know, if they're able to do that and navigate that, that uh, developmental crisis, um, then, they, then they're well placed to uh, move on into adolescence and to keep doing the kinds of things that they like to do and develop their identity. Um, if they're still worried about whether or not they measure up, well, that, that's more concerning. So, um, so that's something that we, we are interested in and, and there's a lot of research on that. Um, moral development. Um, in the previous chapter, we talked about autonomous and heteronomous uh, levels of morality from Piaget's perspective. Um, now we're going back to Kohlberg, which you probably saw in your introductory psychology course, um, pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional levels of moral reasoning. Um, Kohlberg, like Piaget, wasn't necessarily as interested in the answer as how you got to the answer and what that told us about the way you were thinking. Um, so when you think about moral development and moral reasoning, you know, I don't, I don't know how, how many times a day or times per week um, you make decisions based on uh, some level of moral reasoning, uh, but things as simple as, you know, are you gonna park in front of a fire hydrant if that's the only parking place? Um, that's a moral dilemma um, that you could uh, evaluate and say, why, if, you know, if I say yes, you know, what, at, at what level of reasoning am I providing that, that answer? Um, and if I say no, what level? Um, you could say yes or no from Kohlberg's perspective. The answer didn't matter, but it was how you reasoned that. So if the only reason you don't park in front of a uh, fire hydrant is because you think you'll get a ticket, um, that's a pre-conventional level of moral reasoning. Um, on the other hand, if you have global principles about how people should treat each other and 
um, that we should, you know, that we should, you know, make sure that we're looking out for our uh, fellow human beings. Well, then that's more on the post-conventional side. And so, as you read through those levels, try and think about things, decisions that you make uh, about uh, and how you decide whether something's right or wrong, and the explanation that you give. Um, your book talks about um, uh, peer statuses. <clears throat> and I think one of the interesting parts there, that all, I think all of it's interesting, but um, one of the interesting parts there is bullying um, and the bullying prevention programs. Those always get a lot of interest um, for parents, educators, um, really everybody is interested in reducing, excuse me, the amount of bullying. Um, the OLWIS program that's talked about there, I have um, a number of articles um, where that is explained in more detail. So if any of you are interested in the topic of bullying and would like more information about it and would like to just see some of the primary research articles, I'd be glad to send those to you. Um, in general, um, what they have found is that a whole school approach works better than working individually with the bullies, individually with the victims, or getting bullies and victims together. But if you can incorporate the whole school and in, in some sense the community um, in anti-bullying you know, and bullying prevention programs, that that has the best outcomes. And everybody wants a good outcome, right? Um, as we should, and so, um, so I think that's really interesting research. Um, and then, um, other than that, you know, I think you know, it's just you know, we get we're starting to see some similar themes. Um, and as the rest of the course proceeds, um, there are two ways of approaching a, a course like this. One is um, to take a topical approach and say, okay, we're going to talk about um, intelligence at the you know at the child level and at the adolescent level and the adult level and you have one chapter on intelligence and you talk about it all the way through from you know prenatal and genetic um, uh, uh, contributions all the way to the end of life um, that's a topical approach um, in this book we're taking a chronological approach and so we're starting to see some of the same topics um, at varying ages and at, at, at older ages um, so if you start to see things that look a little bit repetitive just remember that uh, that they are um, and secondly, that now that you have a basis for it, now that you have some sort of a foundation in each of these things, um, acquiring more information about how it proceeds throughout the rest of the lifespan um, should, uh, should be, a, I don't want to say easier, I don't think it's easy, but um, it comes more quickly to you. It should come more quickly to you. I hope that it does. So um, that's chapter 10. Um, and again, as always, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Bye.